Okay. Um, welcome, um, everyone, and thanks for coming around. Um, thank God for our lives. We thank God for this day. Uh, today we we're looking at. I testify. Uh, we're looking at the purpose. Uh, there will be a focal text, but we are looking at it from a, from different angles. So you will get uh, exhortation, you get a spoken word based on the focal text, and a roundup of some ideas. But the whole idea is, at the end of the day, um, all of us will be equipped, will be edified to know about how to discover our purpose and how to live it out. But um, as much as possible, what we do is that we just want everybody to participate in terms of the worship and the music. And so we have a theme song, uh, we project the lyrics, but I know most of you know the song that we're going to uh, sing. So yes, um, enjoy the moment and let's just um, participate in what is, what, everything that is happening. Um, well, a friend of mine asked me about uh, some the, the things that we've been doing for a while and when we all come together, they need to really explain what the ministry is all about. We, we just reach out through Christian arts, okay? So we just uh, reach out to people, disciple, and help people, you know, edify people through Christian art. So it could be music, spoken word, drama, choreography, anything, but the whole idea is that we just want to reach out, watch out, it's about reaching out. Um, and that is why we, we see that capturing all these things, because uh, what, we are, what is happening here is not just for all of us who are here. I've had testimonies, um, about some of the things that we've done, even though those who were, I mean, the people were not around, they heard it and then they were so blessed. So that's where I catch it because the ministry is more of watch and walk, and it's like God's anointing is not just on what happens here, but it's on the files that people maybe may listen to. So uh, I said, just um, open your heart and then expect God to move, right? Just expect God to touch your heart and then be prepared for transformation. So let's let me pray for us and I'll we'll start. In Jesus' name, Lord, we bless you. We give you the glory. Thank you, Father, for this um, evening. We commend ourselves into your hands as we start this program. We ask that you would speak to us, you would transform us, and Lord, you will have your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so we're moving into a time of worship. Um, one thing I believe and know about worship is that, you know, the Bible talks about entering the gates of God with thanksgiving into his cause with praise. Um, even at this time, I, I would just want you to, you know, be yourself as much as possible and um, enter into the presence of God, singing the songs with meaning and understanding, that they have some, some impact on your life, even as you sing them, not singing them because they are your favorite, you know, songs we are singing, but singing them because you know that um, where two or three are gathered, he's here and me, so we should be able to, you know, worship, you know, uh, with our lips.
Uh, this is Isaiah 55, 6 through 11. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man in his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the manner for which I sent it.
scripture again because this is a different version um, seek the Lord while he may be found call on him while he is near let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them to, and to our God for he will freely pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So God is speaking here to his people of Israel, reminding them of the covenant he made with them. The words in this passage are comforting, reminding the people that God is ultimately in control. God has a plan for everything and works all things together. The rain and snow come down to earth for its good so that plants can grow. In the same way, everything that happens in this life is under God's control and will be worked together for his good. God uses us to plant seeds in people's lives, showing them his love through us. In our lives, as students and employees, it is easy to lose sight of what we are here for. Sometimes it feels as though our work is in vain, and we cannot imagine that anything we're doing will make a difference. This passage of scripture teaches us, however, that even when we cannot see the fruits of our labor, God is still in control. Even when we cannot see the purpose, God still has one. This purpose may not end up being what we wanted or thought it should be, but we must recognize that God's ways are higher than our own. It is important to remember this in a busy time of the semester with so much to do. We will get tired and weary, but we press on, knowing that we have a purpose. This purpose, as God reminds us, is not our own. Just as God called the Israelites to turn their eyes to him, so he calls us in our own contexts today. Whatever we do or say should be done for God's glory. Therefore, our purpose in this life is entirely rooted in God and his will. This is great news. This means that in God we find hope. In God we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. It is in God that we find our purpose, not in ourselves or anything else. share with you a letter that I wrote to the Lord. Dear Lord, I remember the first time that we met, or should I say the first time I noticed you there. I'd heard stories about you. I'd heard my grandmother sing this one particular song, Blessed Quietness. She'd sing it to you early in the morning. As I awoke, I'd lay in bed and listen to her melody throughout the house. Blessed quietness she'd repeat over and over and over again. She spoke about your goodness, your mercy, your grace, how you provided for her family, that being us. About how you were a friend, about how you directed her life step by step about how she's not even afraid to die now. 
the stories grandma told. So you see, I've always wanted to meet you and get to know you for myself. Then I grew into a woman. Things of this world consumed me. Money, power, fame, success. I planned out every detail. Every year I reviewed my plans, 20,000, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000. I calculated my steps. My growth, my income, it was all in my hands. I sought power like a drug. The noise of wealth crowded out your quietness. Then one day, I met you. I was thrown to the ground on the road to Damascus. Or should I say I noticed you then? And no more could life be the same. 70, 60, 50, 20, and now I sit here in the dust with nothing. Now my body aches. It aches for mission. I sit in anticipation, an anticipation of constant yearning, an ache of letting go of addiction, of what society has told me that I should be, of what society has told me that I should do. I wait in your upper room for your Holy Spirit to anoint me. I twitch, I twitch, I twitch, and I wait in anticipation for your Holy Spirit to anoint me. For I know that your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. So I yield in blessed quietness. I yield to your hand. angles and um, before we pray and round up I just want us to consider some few thoughts based on our focal text and then uh, what we heard you know when you look at the, the scripture we just read um, from verse 10 to 11 going God talks about the fact that just as this, the rain and the snow come down from heaven and they do not return to the I mean heavens, but then they water the earth and cause it to bring forth fruit. And then give it they cause um, people like I mean the eaters and the sowers to get bread and then and seed. So shall his word not proceed out of his mouth without accomplishing the purpose for which he sent it. And interestingly, when God talks about his ways not being our way. He then talks about the fact that his purpose will stand whenever he sends out his word. 
but then he said that his ways are higher than our ways. So the question is, how do you discover the ways of God? And as we think about this scripture, as we think about this focal text and this theme, I just wanted to just think about one thing, that there is a way to the ways of God. There is a way to the ways of God. The ways have a way. And just as God said that his word that comes from his mouth will accomplish the purpose for which he sent it, you need to understand that the way of God is in his word. There's only one way that will lead you to the ways of God. And the way of God, I mean the way of God is his word. And his word is Christ Jesus. In John 1, we know the Bible says that in the beginning was the word. So just as he said that he he sends his word and his word accomplishes his purpose, the epitome of all that God does is in Jesus Christ. And in John 14, 6, you know, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, then it leads you to the ways of God. When you encounter Jesus Christ, when you have Jesus in your life, there are two things that you discover. That the ways of God are as high as the, as high as the divinity and the, the, the radical teachings of Christ. But they are very low as a humanity and a simple acts of obedience. So you begin to understand that even though the, the words of Christ, even though the divinity of Christ makes him very mysterious and make him totally divine and some, somehow unapproachable, if you look at him as a person and the way he acts, the way he has compassion of people, you realize that you can follow him. So his ways are high, but then they are in Christ Jesus. So when you encounter him, that same journey that takes you to Christ likeness is the same journey that leads you to the discovery and the fulfillment of your purpose. So for some of us, you may, you may have Christ, you may have Christ in you. So the next question you have to ask yourself is, how do you discover the ways of God? If Christ is in you, already you have the hope of glory and he is your light and your salvation. But as you are walking with him, what will help you to discover your purpose, your specific purpose is begin to look at what he puts on your heart. What are you compassionate about? What really touches your heart? Because you have the key and you have already entered the way, which is the only way to the ways of God. So as you are following Christ and you are committing yourself to following him, and as you are being conformed to the image of Christ, and you are acting on your compassions, God is leading you gradually to the discovery and the fulfillment of your purpose. Amen. And that is what I want us to really think about. No, we looked at it from, from very I mean, different angles, but I want you to just begin to ponder that. That one, have you encountered this way? He told the disciples that if you had known me, you would have known the Father. And if you don't know him, then you don't even know the way to the ways of God. The ways have a way. That is what I want you to, be, to keep, keep on thinking about. And if you know him, then you have the key to discover your purpose. And if you know him and he's giving you giftings and compassions and passions, then follow him to accomplish those passions. Don't let the passions distract you because he is the way. And as you conform to his image, you will discover and fulfill your purpose. So this is what tonight we came to share. And I just want us to just um, close our eyes and think about some of these questions. Um, just think about your relationship with the Lord, whether you know Jesus Christ. And if you know Jesus Christ, how are you following him to accomplish your passions, the passions he has given him, uh, given you? How are you following him to express the giftings that he has given you? Just think about it and begin to pray about it and ask that the Lord will show you. If you know him as the way, then he will also lead you to the ways of God. He will lead you to accomplish his purpose. So just begin to think about it and prayerfully consider what we are talking about today. The ways have a way. And since you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, begin to think about the ways that he has shown you, the ways that he has given you, 
the passions that he has given you, the gifting that he has given you, and how are you following him to accomplish those passions? He said that without me, you can do nothing. So no matter what you do in this world, if you, you don't have him as your way, you can do nothing of eternal value. You will later find out that all that you did had no value in the eyes of God. Today, I just wanted us to be rich toward God as we discover our purpose. The ways have a way. There's only one way to the ways of God. It's as that God will lead you and guide you to discover your purpose. God will show you the specific ways that you can lead, discover, and fulfill your purpose. Let's sing this chorus prayerfully as we round up. thank you for teaching us about purpose. We thank you for helping us understand that no matter where we go, you are still near and you will care for us and you are always available for us. We thank you that you are willing to make us your vessel, make us whatever you want us to be. So we pray in Jesus' name in this time that you will continue to show us the ways, the higher ways that are that we miss so much. We pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to direct our path. Help us to acknowledge you in all our ways and knowing that you will direct our path. Help us not, not to lean on our own understanding all that we do. Your word says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And so we pray that you would order our steps in your word, order our steps in your ways in the name of Jesus. May we not be fascinated by your acts, but may we know your ways. So that as we move through life, we we'll have a strong relationship with you, and through that, we we'll accomplish your ultimate purpose for our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this time. We thank you for blessing us with your word. We thank you for your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we can continue the discussion. Eyes open. So uh, officially, we ended uh, our package for tonight. I testify to come